21 actually got that uh, yeah. vote. Let's talk about this for the next few minutes because I'm joined here in the studio by okay. Selma James, an author, an activist, and also by Jane Robinson, a social historian specialising in the study of women pioneers in various fields. Uh, thank you so much, both of you, for being here. I've been looking at uh, various pieces through the BBC's archive uh, through the course of the day. It's, it's astonishing. What has struck me in terms of the voices we've heard over the decades is the basic principles uh, some of these things, it is not that far away that uh, has actually fallen into place. I mean, what strikes you about a day like today? I think exactly what you say, Matthew. I mean, it's a hundred years ago that some women were given a voice, but we're still using that voice. We're still testing that voice out in many ways. And that's what I find remarkable. Selma, your thoughts initially on this anniversary? Well, I think uh, Jane has pointed out, in fact, a terribly important fact about it, which is that it was a movement that transcended class. The working class women were in, involved, the middle class, and even some of the upper class as well. And that augured better for the future than we've got, I'm afraid. And yet class was absolutely integral to this, because, as I mentioned there in the introduction, it was only for women over 30 who owned property or were married to a man with property. So class has played a very big part of this as well. Yes, uh, but women of the working class would have worried first of all about poverty and they thought the boat would help them. They thought the boat would address their poverty and address their overwork and address the caring work that they were involved in doing. It didn't do that in the way that they had hoped and that's sad. Jane, I was reading in your details, I mean, you first voted, I think, in 1979 in that election, and you said you found it incredibly exciting, and that's what sparked your chronicling of women through the decades. Well, it is. I happened to be at a women's college at Oxford at the time, and they were celebrating their centenary. So this buzz of women's history was swirling around, and, and I, yes, that, that's what sparked it all off. Um, just going back to something that Selma was saying about class, I think it's really important to remember that right at the beginning of the campaign, there were women from all classes yes. who were campaigning. And really yes, it always gets telescoped to the suffragettes, it, it, but it really was much does. wider. Yes, in fact, the suffragettes were the minority. The majority were the suffragists who were non-militants, all classes, all generations, men as well as women, campaigning together. Simba, you made the point yes. that, uh, about poverty and how it didn't address it and it took decades for other parts of the struggle. But, I mean, the world over, even if you look at the, the, the struggles now, the poorest women are the women with the least influence, still, now. That's right. And um, there were women who, who, at the time of suffrage, put forward the view that the housewife and mother, who was 90% of the population, should have a living wage. There was Eleanor Rathbone, the most extraordinary woman uh, who fought for the suffrage and who was the um, daughter of Liverpool slave and um, Liverpool um, ship owners who had refused to carry slaves. And so she had a social view that was more advanced than most. And she fought for women to have money and she made the case to Beveridge, and she won him over, and it was the first act of the welfare state in 1945 that family allowance was paid to women. Money in women's hands for the first time. She thought that was what the suffrage was for. Now, it's been amazing, actually, just looking through the list, I've got it here, of when different countries around the world actually got the vote. And there is New Zealand, because, of course, uh, they were the first, 1893, and that's Kate Shepherd on the $10 note, one of the leading suffragettes. But you go around the world, and the list, of course, is so long. Uh, we've got pictures from the U.S. Congress uh, from 1910. They got the vote in the U.S. in 1920. We've got uh, pictures from Austria and from Vienna from 1911. They got the vote in Austria in 1918. And then you fast forward to uh, to Saudi Arabia and women there. We've got a picture of uh, women voting in 2015. They got the vote only in 2011. It's astonishing when you see it arc around the world and, and quite when it actually happened. Uh, Jane, for you, the key moments, the key people in something like this that has gone on for, for the hundred years we're talking about, who would they be? What moments would they be? They would be the suffragists, and they would be the suffragists who took part in the first great massed peaceful protest 
1913, it was called the Great Pilgrimage. It was a march for six weeks. Thousands of people involved converged on London. Hardly anybody seems to know about it now because the suffragettes have eclipsed um, that, that particular event. But it was so important. It's at the root, I think, of, of, of peaceful protest now. And, and, and so much, you know, recently we've had the Me Too campaign, we've had uh, the conversations around equal pay. I mean, yes. there are many, many basic issues that still women are fighting for. Yes, and fundamentally our weakness has been that we are the caring gender and we reproduce the human race, which is not marginal, uh, but we are impoverished for it. And when we go out to work, we still don't get the pay that we deserve. Uh, uh, women get much less than men on an, uh, on the, in the question of what their income is for their whole life. And so we are demanding that this caring be acknowledged everywhere in the world and that we are supported in the work that we do caring and are able to walk out of caring and do other things besides. Well, listen, we have simply run out of town. Selma Jones and Jane Robertson, thank you both so much for joining us here on the programme. I'm back in a moment or two. We'll have the latest on the markets. Uh, the markets here in the UK have just closed. I'm back in a moment. Don't go away. Thank you.